Happily Ever After is back at the Magic Kingdom. And to celebrate, we're spending $200 extra dollars to go see it. Hey there, man, fam. The fireworks show Happily Ever After has returned this week to the Magic Kingdom. And it's our first time seeing it since it's returned. And as Alan hinted at, we did book a fireworks dessert party inside Magic Kingdom. So we have spent a hundred extra dollars each to have reserved viewing as well as some desserts and drinks. So I'm excited to see what that looks like and share that with you. Not only that, we took our own advice and are eating dinner outside the Magic Kingdom as well. Can you guess where? It's very hard. Anyway, excited for a delicious evening and to cry my eyes out because Jordan Fisher is back in the Magic Kingdom. Let's go. It's gonna be so good. Just in case it wasn't obvious, we are eating dinner tonight at the Grand Floridian. One of the best pieces of advice that we often give to folks is to not eat dinner inside Magic Kingdom. For starters, the Magic Kingdom dining isn't the best on property. And second of all, as much as we all know and love the Magic Kingdom, it gets hot, it gets crowded, and sometimes it's nice to step away into a lovely resort and luxuriate a little bit over a nice meal. There are several places that you can eat on the monorail line right outside Magic Kingdom. Here at the Grand Floridian, you could go to the Grand Floridian Cafe. You could go to a signature restaurant like Citrico's or Narcuzzi's if you feel like being a little fancier. Over at the Contemporary, you could eat at Steakhouse 71. That's one of my favorite restaurants in Disney. Or again, want to be a little fancier, head upstairs to California Grill. Want character dining? Chef Mickey's. And at the Polynesian, you could go to Kona Cafe, another underrated spot, pretty easy to snag reservations there, as well as the much beloved Ohana. Plus all three of these resorts have great lounges, so there are tons of options of places to eat, drink, relax, and luxuriate a little bit, refresh yourself, get some AC, and then head back into the Magic Kingdom. We asked the ManFam on our Discord where we should eat tonight, which of the three hotels would they like us to showcase some of these underrated restaurants, and they picked the Grand Floridian. So we are headed to the Grand Floridian Cafe. The Grand Floridian Cafe is a very, very solid restaurant here that offers lunch, which I've been confused as why they didn't just go with brunch instead of that, but hey, they're making up words out here. I admire the innovation. Blunch as well as dinner and Honestly, I think it's likely one of the unsung heroes of the restaurants that you have in the monorail resort area. And it's a lot easier to get into than places like Ohana or California Grill or even at the Grand Floridian, like places like Narcuzzi's. At the Grand Floridian Cafe, you can find a wide variety of standard American fare, although it's going to be elevated here, of course, because you're at the Grand Floridian. For appetizers, you'll find things like the chilled jumbo shrimp cocktail, as well as a variety of seasonal soups and salads. As far as entrees go, you'll find things like their famous buttermilk fried chicken, which you can also see taking a new form on the Blunch, something I'll never get used to saying, the Blunch menu in the chicken and waffles meal, as well as things like the lobster thermidor burger and the New York strip steak. The drink menu isn't anything super fancy here. They've got a couple signature cocktails, but it's mostly kind of a generic Disney beverage list. So we just stuck with iced tea uh, since there's drinks to be had at the Magic Kingdom. But what's not ordinary, which you're not gonna see at other Disney restaurants, is they usually have a chocolate display here from the pastry chefs. Remember the Grand Floridian pastry chef team is the team that does the amazing gingerbread house during the holidays. Right now it's the springtime, so they've got these incredible gourmet, uh, over the top decorated Easter eggs out in the lobby, but there's a special one that they put here inside of the restaurant. So it's got Humpty Dumpty and it looks like Alice is trying to help him out on this one. I've seen statue replicas of Cinderella Castle in here. I have seen statues of Remy. So it's a really fun kind of little treat when you come to this restaurant because this is all chocolate and it's all edible, hand painted by the chefs, which is incredible. Starting the meal off the way that Oprah would with bread. I love bread. It's a pretty standard dinner roll. It's very soft. Uh, it's a little bit sweet, nice whipped butter. Definitely nothing exceptional, but not a bad way to start the meal. Our salads have arrived. This is the heirloom apple salad with organic baby lettuce, heirloom apple, sharp cheddar, pecan brittle, and crispy prosciutto with a honey apple vinaigrette. This sounds like a stellar combination of sweet and salty. Let's try to get everything in one bite, which now that I see the size of the lettuce is going to be difficult or messy or both. Right off the bat, this is not a singular texture. It's actually a really nice mix of what you'd expect from lettuce and you get some crunch from the candied pecans as well as the apples. 
I like that it's offset with the vinaigrette. It adds a nice acidity to it, and it finishes off with the richness of the cheddar cheese. And at the back end, you get some nice saltiness from the prosciutto. This is a winner. I don't know what I was expecting, but this this is um this might be top ten salads I've had on property. Best salad you've had in Disney World? Go. It doesn't exist anymore. It's a chicken Caesar salad, lovingly stuffed inside of a hollowed out crisp hoagie bun, served in Hollywood Studios. Well, I was going to say the Cobb salad from the Brown Derby, but now I'm sad. <laughs> Entrees are here, and I went for the famous buttermilk fried chicken. I've had it many times with the waffles at Blunch. I agree, that's a crazy word. Uh, but I've never actually had the dinner version. So this is hand-breaded chicken breast. So it's not like KFC fried chicken where it's going to have bones in it. It's a, it's a chicken breast. And then it uh, comes with loaded smashed potatoes and a warm bacon vinaigrette on top. Oh yeah. This is quite good chicken. It's got nice, it looks like almost like cornflakes or something or the batter. Cause it's flaking like that. It's nice chicken breast. It's more like a big delicious chicken tender than it is what I think of traditional fried chicken. That is awesome. The bacon vinaigrette is providing a little bit of acidity, which is nice to break up the richness from the batter as well as the potatoes. The potatoes are nice and creamy and dreamy, which they were a little bit cheesier, but this is a really good dish. Huge portion too, as you can see, so definitely shareable items here at the Grand Floridian Cafe. I picked up the shrimp and grits. This is jumbo shrimp with chorizo and fennel served on top of a creamy mascarpone cheese grit. Ooh. My southern heart is palpitating. Get out of there. Nope. There's no dainty way to extract the tail from a shrimp. Oh no, what happened? Okay. Some grit. Some chorizo. Some shrimp. It's a lot of shrimp. To your health. Oh wow. Okay, first things first. Oftentimes with shrimp and grits, the problem is it is over salted. You do not have that issue here at all. It's very, very rich throughout with some great semi-spicy flavors coming through. Nothing that's gonna be overheating your palate, but you can tell that there's just the barest bit of spice in the background. The chorizo is cut up rather, rather small. So it's difficult to find. I honestly wish I had more. After having a couple more shrimp, I'm here to say, they're not gonna knock your socks off. They're not, gonna, they're not a blow you with shrimp. They're cooked okay. They have some flavor to them, but unfortunately for me, it's a little bit more fishy than I would want but the grits are still in the show here. I'm in a good place. Well, that was just lovely. The Grand Floridian Cafe is never gonna be the best meal of your vacation, I mm -hmm. feel like, but it's always solid. I never walk away disappointed. I know I'm gonna have a good, solid meal there, feel rejuvenated and ready to head back to the park. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I'm not overwhelmed. I'm not underwhelmed. I'm whelmed. Can you ever just be whelmed? I think you can in Europe. Plus, I love just being in the Grand Floridian, especially now that you've got the piano player in the lobby, the Easter eggs. It's just a beautiful resort, and it's nice to step over here for a little bit, even if you're not staying. Also, I feel so fancy. We are very fancy, but now we are taking our fancy selves to the Magic Kingdom. Less fancy. We are taking the monorail to the Magic Kingdom because the walkway that we would normally take is closed right now. They're doing lots of refurbishments at the Grand Floridian, and so the walkway's been impacted, but there is still the monorail or the boats if you'd like to get over there. It is a simply stunning evening here at the Magic Kingdom. It's also very mild outside too, so. I'm not sweating. I yeah, I feel it's nice. like a normal human. It's nice. And look at those beautiful cotton candy clouds. Yeah. Only thing that could make it better, having a reserved seat for the fireworks. Wait a minute. I see, uh, yeah, it. we have one. I yeah. can't wait. What a beautiful time to walk right down the middle of Main Street USA. And do you see what I see? The castle's getting naked. 
What? The 50th medallion is gone. Oh. Some of the beading looks like it's gone. See, I didn't, yeah. Uh -huh. you, didn't, you didn't know what I was saying, did you? No, that was a weird sentence at first, but now I get it. But it makes sense now. The uh -huh. clock that was on Main Street for the 50th is down. They're like, goodbye 50th, hello D100. Honestly, a welcome change. True. 50th was fun. It I'm was happy way to welcome too in a new celebration. It was very long. It's a long time to celebrate 50 years. It felt like 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> like we mentioned earlier, we have booked one of the fireworks dessert parties. There are three different in-park dessert parties, and these are all an added cost on top of your ticket. There is the fireworks pre-party. This one allows you to have your desserts and snacks and drinks prior to the fireworks and then enjoy reserved viewing. There is the fireworks post party. That's the one we're doing. We're headed to check in now. Then we will get reserved viewing for Happily Ever After and then enjoy our desserts, snacks, and drinks afterwards. Those are both $99 per adult and $59 per child. There is also the fireworks sweets and seats dessert party, which is on the lower half of the Tomorrowland Terrace where you check in, you get your treats and sweets and drinks, and then you get reserved seating for the fireworks. That one's very nice. I've done that one before, but you are sitting a little off to the side. And so for our first viewing of Happily Ever After, we wanted to be right in the middle in the hub. Seats and treats is a little bit more expensive. It's $114 per adult and $69 per child. Then there are two dessert party options outside of the Magic Kingdom. There is the ferry boat cruise, which takes you on one of the Magic Kingdom ferry boats, parks you in the middle of the lagoon. You get to watch the fireworks from the water and there's sweets and drinks aboard the ship. That one is also $99 for adults, $59 for kids. And do note that one is currently under refurbishment till the beginning of July. I've done that one as well and it's fun and it's cool if you've seen the fireworks several times. It's fun to be out on the boat, but certainly not as good as being inside the park. The one I would say that rivals being inside the park, a good reason to watch it from outside is at the California Grill. They have a uh, appetizer and dessert party. Definitely more catered towards adults, I would say. It has a dress code. You're going to get some light bites, including sushi and other eats from California Grill, as well as some more gourmet desserts. And it's all you care to imbibe as well. That one's $129 and you get to watch the fireworks from atop. The contemporary, they pipe in the music. It's absolutely beautiful. I definitely recommend that one as more of like a honeymoon or an anniversary treat. It's a little bit more adult friendly than these ones in the park, but all of these make a really great enhancement to a trip for a special occasion or a birthday or if you just want to not have to worry about fighting for a spot to see the fireworks. We got all checked in. Check-in is at the Tomorrowland Terrace and now that we have been checked in, show that wristband. It says enchantment on it. That is incorrect, but now that we are checked in, we can go to the terrace and take our seats in preparation for the show. Well, after much deliberation, we have made it to what we have considered the perfect spot. I think it looks incredible, so I'm very happy with this. Now, you Tinkerbell! She's going fly right there. That's Any? almost as magical as it'll be in an hour. <clears throat> as you'll see, there are a number of individuals here already, and we have checked in an hour before the fireworks. So people start showing up early, and we recommend you do the same if you want to find the perfect spot like we did. There it is. Right there. One more demonstration of Tinkerbell, please. Whee! Oh, wait. I got to... Magic. Why are you purring like a cat? That was pixie dust. <laughs> twinkle, 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 twinkle. I'll take that. Yeah, that'll work. Alan. Molly. Best fireworks show Magic Kingdom's ever had, go. Wishes. That's the right answer. Um, happily Ever After or Enchantment. Happily Ever After. Listen, listen. I know a lot of you liked to hate on Enchantment. I don't hate Enchantment. And that made me sad because I really liked Enchantment. I thought it was beautiful. I liked the projections down Main Street. I thought that was a really nice enhancement. I think Enchantment was a good show, especially when they added the Walt tribute at the beginning. But I don't think it was a good 50th show for, for Walt Disney World. I couldn't agree more. If you're going to roll out Enchantment, that's going to be your next Happily Ever After for years. Yeah, not 18 months. What I will say about Happily Ever After, we're not going to be able to see it tonight, is that they did add enhancements down Main Street. There are some uh, projections down Main Street, so the next time we see it, we'll have to stand a little bit more down Main Street, yeah. but I'm excited to just stand here right in the castle. But I agree, wishes for life. There is definite nostalgia factor there, though. Yeah, 
from college program to internship. That's the one I saw growing up. Yeah. Oh, she was around a while. She was she was long. Yeah. The other best fireworks show that I ever saw here in Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom was the Summer Night Tastic fireworks, where they had the Pirates of the Caribbean score and they made it look like they were bombing and blowing up the castle. Then it became the Pirates and Princesses uh -huh. situation. And they had a whole make it pink, make it blue scene with the good fairies. I really liked that show too. But uh, share your favorite fireworks show down in the comments. Are you Team Wishes, Happily Ever After, Enchantment, some other random fireworks? We'd love to know. Let us know. Be respectful, but let us know. Yeah. Also, I miss Queen Angela Bassett already. Status update. T minus 15. They've asked everyone to stand and move forward. So what I've learned is um, I'm still standing on Main Street for an hour before the show. What? Oh, I'm just agreeing by looking You're around. You're checking around, around Main Street. I thought a proposal was happening. Doing some mathematics. Um, but in a less crowded area than normal. That was the math. Less yeah. crowded, yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, as just a friendly PSA courtesy in the parks, I like to take my ears off when watching the fireworks or any show just because, you know, everybody wants to see. Nobody wants to see my ears as cute as they were. Um, and so those are off my head right now. But we've got like 13 minutes left. Who's going to cry more? Could, could be anyone. Anyone's game. That's true. In just 10 minutes, the Magic Kingdom invites you to enjoy our nighttime spectacular Happily Ever After, presented by Pandora Jewelry. Our journey begins in just 10 minutes. Thank you. Are you whimpering? And it just announced the name? <laughs> I was laughing because I love when they do the the, oh, the, tagline, the, sponsor, the sponsor plug. Especially when they do the announcements in another language. Like if they do a Spanish announcement. Bien they do, yeah, they do the whole thing in Spanish, but then they still go Pandora Jewelry in English and it always makes me laugh. Presentada by Pandora Jewelry. Yeah. Another pro tip, before you join the uh, corral, Make sure you have a water, have gone to the bathroom, get a snack if you need one, because once you're in, you're in. Especially this close to showtime. Maybe when we got in here with 45 minutes to go, you would have been good, but we're 10 minutes away. You're not getting back to your family. They've abandoned you. They're gone forever. You don't have a family now. Find an, find someone else that looks nice. They're I'm your sure, family now. I'm sure they're willing. It's, it's Magic Kingdom, folks. You'll find a nice group. Find a family with matching t-shirts. Even though you do not have their nation's colors, their crest, their nation, they colors? may adopt you into their family. Do you know how nations work? Close enough. Close enough. Uh, or find a ride you want to live in, because that's that is your home now. Swiss Family Treehouse is my recommendation. Spacious, an actual house. Yeah. Where would you live? Jungle Cruise. Nope. That's Pirates like of the Caribbean. Literally the worst choice. Is Pirates of the Caribbean. I, I retracted and changed. Actually, Pirates del Caribe. The worst choice is Small World. The dolls would keep. They keep moving. I would say that. No. 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 I'm going to the Carousel of Progress.
The good news, that soundtrack still slaps. Always. That soundtrack is awesome. Yeah. I forgot a lot of the music. I forgot the Mulan part, and I love Mulan. The mashup between the Lion King and Hercules. Oh, the Unwell. remember who you are. Yes. Oh, I was Unwell. bawling during that part. I also forgot about the Lion King fight song before the pirates, and I love the pirates music. So I forgot a lot of that show. It's such it a good show. It really has a beautiful, beautiful score, and the images are lovely. And they did add a couple new elements. My biggest problem with Happily Ever After before was that it didn't have enough pyro. It didn't have enough fireworks in the skies compared to Wishes. And Enchantment had more fireworks than Happily Ever After. People get mad at me when I'd say it's a bigger show. They'd be like, no, it's not. I'm like, no, it literally is bigger and has more fireworks. But I think they added more fireworks. I think they absolutely did. They're, especially in the castle courtyard area, immediately yeah. behind the castle, there's a lot more illuminating the back of it, too. There was one firework that went on when um, the Emperor says... Flower that boom, blooms in adversity? Yeah, there's this one firework. I think it's a new firework. It was like four different colors and it bloomed like a flower. It was beautiful. It was awesome. I, that's a new firework because I'd remember that. The bad news. Hmm. Tinkerbell didn't fly. It was a tad windy. It's, it's pretty windy. I'm looking at a flag on Main Street right now and it's pretty blustery and I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm bummed she didn't fly. It is sad. I mean the show is still gorgeous but that is an iconic moment. And that can happen. That can happen when you see the show. If it's raining or too windy, Tinkerbell may not be able to fly. She's just a tiny little pixie. With itty bitty pixie She's wings. She's little pixie with little wings and she mm. can't fly. But besides that, the show's great. I'm glad it's back. It's a wonderful show. The music's awesome. Top to bottom. Incredible. Welcome back, Jordan Fisher. We're happy to have you. Yeah. We battled uphill, upstream. Yeah. Through like a stampede salmon. of people. Like Mufasa and Simba, but more successful. And... The, by the way, to be clear, the measure of success there is death. Well, we did that. We succeeded. Um, and now we're in line to go into the post party. At the dessert party, there are a lot of beverages to choose from. For all your hot beverages, you're going to have coffee, including decaf, as well as tea. There's a variety of adult beverages, including red and white wine, along with sparkling wine, as well as some beer selections. And then you have a variety of juices, including the famous Pog juice, some strawberry lemonade, as well as milk and tea for the young ones. There's also sparkling cider for those of you who would like to feel fancy, but don't want to consume alcohol. The majority of desserts are located on this long table in the middle of Tomorrowland Terrace, but you can choose either side to go to as they have the exact same items and then meet at the middle with the crips. On the dessert table, you had a chocolate silk pie, a cookies and cream cheesecake mousse, a chilling chamber pop, which is a cake pop push-up, hand-dipped chocolate-covered strawberries, a devil's chocolate cake pudding, tres leches cupcakes, also butterscotch pudding with caramel corn on top, fresh fruit, chocolate and vanilla cake bites, and some different breads and cheeses if you'd like a savory bit. They've got firehouse donuts, which are ricotta donuts with a strawberry sauce to go with. And again, the dessert bars meet in the middle where the cast members were serving up caramel apple crips. Also, over near the entrance to the bathrooms at Tomorrowland Terrace, you had a kid's dessert station. But of course, anyone can eat dessert from anywhere. You had chocolate chip cookies, sugar cookies, assorted party cupcakes, and these very cute dwarf cupcakes that certainly are not using leftover dwarf decals from the now extinct 50th ice cream cone featuring the seven dwarfs. Plus, at this station, they had some different colored frostings and sprinkles. So if your kids want to add some sugar to their sugar, they can decorate their own cookies. Now to consume said treats. We both started off with a glass of wine. This was a red. This is a white. I jumped right into my favorite dessert, the chocolate covered strawberry. I don't know what you want me to say other than it tastes like delicious chocolate and a strawberry. No notes. Next, the cookies and cream cheesecake mousse. Disney loves a mousse based dessert. This was good. It tasted kind of like an Oreo, similar to the gray stuff, but you could tell it had that cream cheese cheesecake feel as well. It was fine. If you like Oreos, I think you'll like this. Then I jumped into the Tres Leches Cupcake, which had the worst cupcake wrapper ever. I did not care for this, which I normally love Tres Leches because of the coconut flavor. The cupcake itself was moist and delicious, but there was so much of this whipped cream on top, it wasn't a win for me. And then of course I ate crackers and cheese because even though this is a dessert party and I already ate a full meal at the Grand Floridian, I'm never gonna turn down cheese cubes. And you know what? They were delicious. 
I also tried a strawberry cupcake from the kids' table. The cake itself was very nice and moist with a hint of strawberry. The frosting was a little too artificial for me, but I think kids will enjoy it. And lastly, I decorated a sugar cookie with MC for Mammoth Club. Can't you tell? It tasted like a sugar cookie from a grocery store, but I mean that as a compliment. First up, I picked up the butterscotch pudding. It was okay. It wasn't sickly sweet, and that's about all it had going for it. I wouldn't go get it again, but the popcorn on top was a nice crunch. Next up, I became a culinary innovator when I took a chocolate-covered strawberry and shoved it inside of a cinnamon donut, and that is the second best thing I had all evening. It was a nice bit of fresh fruit flavor inside of a donut that was average. I also got grapes, and they tasted like grapes. But back to innovating. I also took a strawberry and dipped it inside of the cookies and cream mousse. Very, very good. Seven out of 10, would recommend. And on to the best thing I had all evening, the caramel apple crepe. The crumble on top, along with the way the apples were cooked, made it taste just like an apple pie, but it was light enough because it was in a crepe form. Easily the best thing. Okay, let's talk about the dessert party. Yeah, just wrapped up with the dessert party. It was lovely. I think having done these events before, I think they've really improved the desserts. I don't think anything's amazing, the best dessert you're gonna have in Disney World, although I do love a chocolate covered strawberry. Um, but I feel like they stepped up and brought out some more unique offerings. And it's nice to just sit and have a nice treat and a, not gonna lie, it's nice to have a glass of wine and it's, sit. It feels weird in the magic really kingdom. It feels really weird. It feels very weird. See Cinderella Castle and have a glass of wine. A lot of people like to make a mimosa out of the champagne and Pod all the juices. Juice mimosas. You know, that's a genius idea that the cast members told us too late. Um, <laughs> but we did try it. I'm not gonna lie to you. We tried it on the way it out. Was it was nice. It was really good. I would do that next time. I think I like the fact that we did the later, the post mm, I agree. show eating, dining, feeding, mainly because it didn't feel rushed. Like, did we have to fight through a crowd to get there? Yes, but it wasn't anything like what would, we would have had to have done down Main Street. <sighs> the transportation going to be significantly less crowded when we go now. Yeah. And I imagine if we had gone to the earlier seating, I would have felt rushed to try to eat as much as I possibly could <laughs> to get my value and then go and find a spot knowing full well that the folks who had the post seating yeah. were going to have the best spots. Yeah, the post seating people all had the front half of the garden and the pre seating people all had the back half of the garden. So if you're gonna do one, if you're thinking of doing one of these two, I would agree wholeheartedly recommend the post seating. I do think the least stressful of all of them is the seats and sweets, sweets and seats, seats and treats. It rhymes. Treats and seats. <laughs> Uh, because that one you do not have to worry about going in through the crowd at all. You get a seat the entire time. What I will say con of that one is your seat, which is assigned to you when you get there, very much could make or break it. I was lucky enough to sit right up against the railing, so I had an amazing view of the show. Granted, it is off to the side, uh, so you're not getting a dead-on amazing perfect first look kind of view of it. Um, but. That one is nice because you get to like sit and enjoy your desserts and your drinks whilst the show is happening and not worry about trying to like fight on the crowd at all. So I like the dessert parties. I think they are definitely a fun way to enhance like a birthday or a special occasion. Uh, they can be expensive. $100 a person adds up quick. Uh, and in all honesty, unless it's really, really busy, you can get a very good seat to see the fireworks and like a Dole Whip or a Mickey bar. <laughs> Who doesn't love a Mickey's Premium? I love a Mickey's Premium. Well, if you think it's better, then I propose for science and absolutely no other selfish reason whatsoever that we try the seated treat. Sweets and seats. Sweets and seats <laughs> and treats. And eats. Ooh, yeah. situation. Or, or uh, the California Grill dining package. I, I could be tempted to do either of those for science, for science only. Only for science. Yeah. For the sake of study and creating a solid and cohesive hypothesis to lead us towards a theory yeah. in yeah. firework viewing, our firework viewing thesis, if you will. Sure. Uh, it feels like it needs to be done. We can't come to a scientific conclusion without testing all of the different methods. Right. Doing the same thing over and over again is the definition of insanity. If you'd like us to conduct this scientific experiment, if you're curious in the results, let us know. I'll bring my beaker. The Muppet. 
Well, friends, that is a wrap on this wonderful evening at Magic Kingdom. So glad Happily Ever After is back. If you want to see us do that science experiment, got other ideas for videos, let us know down in the comments. And be sure to like and subscribe if you're new and follow us on all of our socials. And if you want to vote and participate like we had earlier for this video, join us on Discord. We love to chat and engage with you all there, and the Man Fam is always growing. We're happy to have you. <laughs> and until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it's been so magical. It is magical. Jordan Fisher's back. Happily ever after. The battles, the stories, the losses, and all the glory. Name out the way we live every day. Just look to the hand fly. We all have the courage to fly. They're so cute.